You probably think you know about jeans because you've been wearing them your entire adult life, right? But what if I told you that just about every feature of jeans is not standard? There is no standard pocket placement and that variance could be the difference between your butt looking twice as big or half as small. There's no standard materials composition and that variance could be the difference between oh so comfortable all day and I can hardly breathe stiff. From sizing to washes to every style under the sun, there's no real standard and that's great for you because that means you can find your perfect pair of jeans if you know what you're looking for. Now I'm not here to sell you jeans that look really great on me. As much as I can say that a fit and flare dress is going to be universally flattering for most women, there's no one right pair of jeans that's going to be flattering for all of us. Jeans preferences are as unique as each of us, so instead I can give you 10 features to notice about jeans and how those variances can affect the way you look. Cool? Let's start with what you need to know about sizing. If I ask you what jean size are you, how confident are you that you're wearing the correct size? The thing is your size in jeans is going to depend on the jeans that you're talking about. And to find the right size jeans to flatter your body, you need to know two sets of measurements. One, your body's measurements, and two, the measurements of the jeans that you're trying. Right now, my body is five foot five. I'm about 150 pounds, give or take, and I have a 29 inch waist circumference. So you would think I could just buy a size 29 in jeans because that's my waist measurement, right? Oh, and it's the same with guys. Like, you may think you like someone, but you could be wrong. Well, there's a few reasons why that is incorrect. Number one, a size 29 in 100% cotton jeans is going to fit much more tightly than a size 29 in 95% cotton, 5% spandex. Number two, I might prefer the size 30 or even 31 when I try on a pair of jeans, but if I only stick to my size, then I'm not going to know what's truly flattering. And I think sometimes we get stuck on size because of an ego thing. We have this like identity with our size. We are this size. That's why I like to clarify sometimes that I am not a 29 inch waist. My body has a 29 inch waist. First off, it's going to vary through different stages of our lives. And secondly, you are a soul housed in a body. So having this attachment to your size can sometimes be detrimental to you exploring who you really are. Now that was probably way too deep down the rabbit hole. So let me pull this back into jean sizing. The point is that you really want to try to find the right size in the jeans that you're trying on, not just the size that you think you are. The second problem with robotically choosing the size you've always worn is that the hips might not be the right size for you. For me personally, because my hip to waist ratio is an 11 inch difference instead of the standard 10 inch difference, I typically need to size up one or two on my jean size and then get the waist tailored in. But it can vary if I'm trying on a curvy fit, which I will get to later. The third reason you might not be wearing the correct size is because you're not matching the size to the style that you're going for. In the last few years, very baggy has been trendy, but if you're a millennial or older like me, you might still be wearing your skinny jeans, your tighter jeans, your high-waisted jeans, and that's fine. But if your personal style is more relaxed, then a larger size will probably match your style. For all these reasons, you might want to play around with the size of jeans that you're trying on in store, but I still think it's a very good place to start with knowing your waist size and your hip circumference. If you're not sure how to measure your body or what these measurements even mean when it comes to identifying your body shape, then I have a really great video for you to watch next. I will link that at the end of this video. But let's continue with the other nine features you need to know about jeans. What rise of jeans do you typically wear? Is it low rise, mid rise, high rise, or like me, extra high rise? Typically the most flattering rise for your jeans is going to align with your natural waist. And to find that out, all you have to do is stand with your feet together, bend to the side, and where does your side crease? 
Now some people say, well my side doesn't crease because I have extra fat in my abdomen or I'm pregnant. In that case, look at your silhouette and where do you see the narrowest part of your waist? So for some people, a low rise actually is the most flattering, especially if you have a short torso and you're trying to elongate it. I have a short waist, but I actually like to exaggerate it. I think it's kind of fun to play up that top one third, bottom two thirds. So even though an extra high rise is going to be like right at my rib cage, I still really like that style and they're comfortable for me to sit in all day. Oh, and that's something I wanted to say is that rise isn't just about style, it's really about lifestyle as well. What can you sit in all day? Like these jeans I think are a 12 inch rise, I'll have to check the B-roll, but they are so comfortable for me to sit in, whereas a 10 inch rise or a 9 inch rise just really hits at a place that makes me want to unbutton my jeans if I'm going to sit in them. If you've never played around with your rise height, I would recommend going in store and trying out those different rises and seeing if they're comfortable for you by in the dressing room, sitting down, standing up, sitting down, standing up. What do you have to tug up? You know, play around with those different rises because you might find one that's more flattering and more comfortable for you. Let's talk butt pockets. I feel like this is something that would have been more useful to learn in high school than trigonometry. Butt pockets can really enlarge your butt or shrink it. It can make it look more perky or saggy. It can make your style look juvenile or professional. I could probably do an entire video on butt pockets, but here are the highlights. Butt pockets are going to change the way your butt looks. If you want to enhance your butt, wear smaller pockets. But if you want to disguise a big butt, hi, it's me, wear larger pockets. And pockets can be placed more wide set or narrow. Wide set is better for enlarging your butt, but narrow is better for making it less noticeable. And now that I'm telling this, you're going to notice it out and about while you're living your life. And I have to say, I'm both sorry and you're welcome because especially if you're a curvy woman, butt pockets make such a huge difference in the look of your jeans. Just like all the other facets of jeans we've talked about, the inseam length is going to vary depending on your jeans. However, you might have a preferred inseam length depending on your normal style and lifestyle throughout your week. So if you are wearing jeans into the office with maybe two inch heels, then your inseam is going to be the measurement from the crotch gusset of your jeans. I really don't like that word crotch, but that's, it's the technical term is the crotch gusset. The crotch gusset of your jeans down the length of your leg plus those two inch heels. But for me, I'm mostly barefoot around my home all day and I have a pretty casual Floridian lifestyle. So I like the cropped length. The most important thing to keep in mind with inseam is that it's going to be based on your outfit and shoes. So just to use yoga pants as an example, because I have only one standard size inseam for yoga pants, that's 26 inches. I always want the length of my yoga pants to be right above my ankle. That helps me when I'm shopping to visualize how many inches above or below the ankle I want my jeans to fall and that is the inseam. I started wearing skinny jeans when I was in high school back in the early 2000s. Back in the early 2000s. Those are really the only styles that everyone was wearing. Like there was a time in my elementary and middle school days when we were all wearing the slightly flared or boot cut jeans from Abercrombie, no, I, I was actually poor, so Abercrombie was like the most ambitious dream I had. But I think I generally shopped at American Eagle in middle school. Every August before school started, I would get a pair of low rise flared jeans. And then at some point around my freshman year of high school, the huge trend shift started towards skinny jeans. And the next year you wouldn't be caught dead in flared jeans. So we wore skinny jeans for years and years and years, and that was fine for my 13 year old body. But now that I am a grown woman with curves, skinny jeans just typically aren't the best option. 
And I'm not saying throw out your skinny jeans because there's definitely a time and a place for it, especially for wearing under tall boots. Skinny jeans are unbeatable. But if you're balancing the look of curvy hips, especially in a more dressed up or professional setting, then I find that the flared leg jeans or trouser style jeans look much more sharp. Like I said, I hope you don't feel personally targeted by my opinion on skinny jeans. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? I'm really just trying to challenge you to go outside of your style comfort zone because you'll probably find a style that aligns more with who you are today outside of that zone. So here are some other jean styles to try. If you have a curvy body frame, a soft flared leg will balance out your hips. Now, if you want to emphasize your curves in an outfit, stick with skinny jeans. That is definitely going to make those sexy curves come out a little bit more. Since looser styles are trending this year, you can also try some straight leg jeans paired with booties. Just be cautious about matching your footwear to these jeans because if the shaft of your booties is too large and it bunches up your jeans, it's going to make your legs look shorter. So if you're wearing jeans with booties, just make sure you have a good pairing there. Different styles of jeans are going to pair well with different footwear, so just play around with it and find what combination works really well for your style. I feel like this should be a PSA because some people don't get it. Curvy doesn't mean fat. And when it comes to jeans especially, curvy just means that the proportion of the waist measurement and the hip measurement is a little bit more expanded. For example, I certainly prefer curvy style jeans because there's less of a chance that I have to get them altered. My 40 inch hips are just an inch or so larger than the standard sizing for a 29 inch waist. The curvy cut of jeans just means it accounts for that proportion difference. Now, some brands are automatically curvy. I think of Good American as a curvy brand, and some brands are automatically very straight framed, like a lot of the preppy brands, but a lot of them also offer curvy fit jeans, and that's going to be more flattering if you have a curvy frame. This facet of jeans is something that I just picked up this year, leg opening. You would think that skinny jeans all have a standard leg opening because they're skinny, but you'd be incorrect. I've seen skinny jeans that the leg opening is as low as seven inches. That means your entire ankle has to fit in a seven inch leg opening and stay that way all day. But some skinny jeans are like a 10 inch leg opening. Flare jeans can be anywhere from 15 to even 25 inches. So when you read that it's a certain style of jean, don't assume that you know what the leg opening is going to look like on you. I've measured my entire collection of jeans and even similar styles produce a wide variance. So make sure you're trying on the jeans and deciding, is this a flattering leg opening on me? Does it need to be more narrow or does it need to be wider? When it comes to fabric composition, this is truly not standard. It used to be in the 50s and 60s that denim meant 100% cotton. And then somewhere along the way, this glorious thing called stretch was invented. And you can get that in nylon, in spandex, in lyocell, in a number of different fabrics that combine with the cotton to make it more stretchy. And why does that matter to you? Because if you have 100% cotton jeans, they're going to look really, really great. And then when you go to sit down, you're going to probably want to unbutton them. But if you have stretch in your jeans, they're going to be much more comfortable. They're going to expand with you as you're sitting and then shrink back into place when you stand up. I'm going to be honest, limiting this list to only 10 features has been very difficult, but the last one I want to tell you about is important in how you look. So let's talk about the wash or rinse of your jeans. When it comes to wash styles, there are a million options. We have everything from white denim to black denim to blue denim, or if you're extra sassy, pink denim. 
So how do you pick a color that's going to complement your style? Think about the words that describe your style. What vibe do you have? If you have a casual style, then light wash jeans are going to work well for you. If you have a more sophisticated and chic style, then dark wash denim is probably going to work. One thing I want to point out that I think all curvy women should know about is that the whiskering effect that a lot of jeans have right on the hips, it makes you look wider in that area. If you like that, then that's what it's there for. But if you don't like that, then you might want to notice it and avoid it the next time you're shopping for jeans. There's no one right style of jeans for anyone, but hopefully these 10 facets will help you think through what's most complementary to your body, your style, and your lifestyle. If you want to improve your personal style, be sure to subscribe to my channel for a brand new video every week. I'll see you with the next one, but until then, take care.